How's it going, everybody? Hopefully the connection is okay and y'all can hear me. Um, congratulations to who do we have that won earlier? Fat Fatlack and Austin Payne, uh, part of our members group. We did um, uh, just a little comment thing in there, but uh, yeah, just go ahead and send us that uh, an email, letting us know that you won, and we'll get you paid up on that. But for all the rest of you, go ahead and hashtag Lime into the comments, and that will get you in for a chance to win some. Uh, cool lime line prizes we'll be giving away usually we've been doing three a day right so we'll do one here in a little bit we'll do one midway and then towards the end we'll give something away too but uh enough about that uh we're on part two of the fxr build that i'm doing here it's actually huh well sorry about that hopefully it's not too bad uh but i do we did last week um, if you haven't already seen that last week, we did pull the parts off and we did talk a little bit about the materials and stuff that we needed for this. Um, but uh, kind of go over what we what we have here and what we're dealing with today. And then we'll also go over the products that we're going to use. Um, and then also we do have a, a materials list that um, you'll be able to look at. But what we're working with now is a uh, bare metal um, aftermarket rear fender. This thing is greasy as hell. So we're going to want to make sure we get this thing cleaned up really good on the bottom and the top. We have to make sure that all of this um, manufacturer oil they put on here uh, to keep it from rusting. We need to make sure we get that all off. So um, we'll be doing that today. We have uh, an aftermarket market of three quarter fairing here. So all we need to do is this is pretty much just a scuff and spray. Um, so while the other parts are in the booth, getting the epoxy primer, this thing doesn't necessarily need all the work the other parts do. So um, we'll go ahead and prep this while those are drying in between coats. Um, and uh, we'll get this thing ready because this is already one step ahead of some of these other parts. We do have, so this is a factory front fender. Um, looks like underneath this is going to need quite a bit of work because we have some double-sided tape that's lined out through this whole thing. looks like I did have LEDs at one point. Um, but we're going to take off this aftermarket uh, Willie G emblem. So if anybody wants that, let me know. I'm going to send it to them. And other than that, it looks like this, it's, it looks like a stock paint. That's good. Uh, there is a pretty gnarly chip right there, but we're going to be able to get that out. Um, so most likely this thing, unless we uncover something that we don't know about, this thing is not going to need epoxy primer, uh, but it will need a urethane um, sandable primer over the top. So um, this is actually one step ahead too. So, But we'll get this prepped while the other parts are, uh, the epoxy's drying on the other parts. Travis G said he'll take the emblem. He will? Okay. Yeah, just uh, same thing. Info at Limeline, paintsupply.com. And uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you hooked up with that. Okay, the worst out of the bunch is this uh, this tank. It's We've got a pretty gnarly ding right here, most likely from the handlebars. Same thing on this side. Uh, look underneath this thing. It's actually not too bad underneath here. We have the paint coming off now just by looking at it i can tell that this is not a a factory harley davidson paint job because um, i don't think that it was even primed correctly from what i'm looking at here but uh maybe there is deep down underneath all this maybe there's factory paint but what we're going to have to do is sand this thing down um, with an aggressive 80 grit and uh, that way we can see our problems and we are most likely um in fact, 100% we're going to go ahead and epoxy this because we're going to burn through enough paint to get that down and we're going to be into bare metal where we really just need that, um, the safety of the epoxy primer, the extra corrosion resistance that the epoxy primer gives us. Um, also, uh, epoxy, it's, uh, it sticks better. It's, uh, it's pretty much sticks to anything. So it's, it's in the name, uh, epoxy primer. So good stuff. 
Um, we're going to cut this thing down, um, not by hand. You could do this by hand. We're going to use a machine with DA sander with some 80 grit that would cut this thing down pretty quick. Uh, another way is you could just send this down to a sandblaster, or if you had a sandblasting cabinet, you could go ahead and uh, blast all the paint off of this as well. But uh, if it was factory Hardy Davidson paint, it would basically be a uh, sand and shoot or a scuff and shoot kind of depending on the condition and if there's any emblems and stuff that are buried underneath. So, okay. Well, we're going to get started. Anybody have any questions? They want to know if the primer is better than silk etching primer. Yes, absolutely. Uh, like a self, a self etching primer is a self etching primer um, goes on super light and basically it's um, like a primer that has acid in it that will help bond to the metal. However, it doesn't have the corrosion resistance um, and the um, the color hold out, the scratch hold out because we're priming over sand scratches well everything's all done and everything's all painted okay and then it's out your, your paint job's out in the sun and it gets cold and it gets hot well what happens is is that paint will shrink expand shrink expand and eventually you could get some of the sand scratches to come back because just that that movement of the the paint and the clear um it could get into the grooves and it could show those sand scratches, especially if they're like the big 80 grit scratches um, and you don't refine those before you, you sand. This primer is going to help keep that together. It's going to make sure that um, it's going to help that from not happening. So uh, if you hit something with 80 grit and you hit it with a 1K primer, a high build, well, there's a good chance that down the road that, like I said, those sand scratches are going to come back. Okay, but there's the epoxy. Got part A, part B. It mixes one to one. Pretty easy. You can get this on Amazon or on the Limeline Paint Supply website. Um, and but yeah, bulletproof way to really do it. We're even going to layer this down before we have to do any body work as well. Uh, I have a couple of videos on that, but um, I feel like, and I have been taught this way that by layering down the epoxy primer on the bare metal and before any of the body work is done it's going to provide that protective layer. Um, if you stick in body filler straight to bare metal, well, it can be soaking up uh, moisture um, and really who knows what's happening between those, uh, between the metal and the other layer of body filler. You know, there could be you know, stuff going on there where it eventually will delaminate. This is gonna protect it from that. Which would be better on spoke wheels? Uh, this is gonna be the best on anything, really be honest um, especially just for the adhesion part of it you're gonna have a lot better luck with uh, an epoxy but once again this stuff i mean everything has its has its deal everything has its job um, this job is not to build up high it's not to build up thick and it's not to um it's not meant to really sand to level things out like if you had body filler you wouldn't lay this over the top of body filler and expect to um, sand it smooth by having a high build there. This stuff's not very sandable. The epoxy in it makes it not very sandable. Um, it's uh, rock hard when it dries. So, and that's really the foundation that you want when you start on the bare metal is that rock hard epoxy. Uh, but yeah, once again, you, if, you, if you have damage, you need to apply another primer. And we'll be doing that. Um, I'll be doing that throughout the week next week. We'll talk a little bit more about how we're layering that uh, sandable primer on top. When using the disposable cups, can you use them over to paint a car? Yes, you can. The disposable cups, you can clean them out. Sure. And do you wipe the metal prep before epoxy? Absolutely. Metal prep? Always. And have you Always used clean. the epoxy on high build primer uh, or the high build primer on aluminum? Or what is your recommendation? Uh, um, it's up to you on that. Uh, aluminum, uh, to be honest, I'd probably just go with high build primer. Um, but 
you got any kind of body work between that you know really really i don't work on aluminum a whole lot um, but it's kind of up to you if you want to make sure that everything's going to stick well i think epoxy is still the way to go even on aluminum aluminum still kind of corrodes a little bit right cheddar on here he knows about metals so yeah i'm sure there's uh you know it still sweats it's still it's uh, still can corrode is epoxy good for fiberglass parts uh epoxy is it good for fiberglass parts yes it is fantastic for fiberglass parts Cheddar said he should he doesn't know if he should be watching this or state of the union address oh okay Did you get the big show pictures from World of Wills? I didn't see anything, no. Big show? Uh, hey, you want to put that list we have real quick? We do have the list that I gave to uh, all the members have it. Uh, there are some spelling issues on there I didn't notice. We won't go over that. But um, here is the list that we're going to need. This is one of the few lists that we're going to need for this. Uh, what's speaking? The mouse? Okay, don't. <laughs> uh, uh, what do we have on the list there, babe? Wax and grease remover, glass cleaner, microfiber towels. Towels, got it. We got microfiber towels again. 800 grit, 180 grit, 600 grit. Okay, got it all. Sanding sponges. Sanding sponges. Limelight epoxy primer two quart kit. Yep. Line line body build sand primer one quart latex glove a dust mask respirator eye protection and a paint suit. Got it all. So that's the list you're gonna need to start out with um, the primer. Right now I'm using a wax and grease remover that's in a can. This is from our friend at um, Eastern is it Eastern Speed Shop. I think it's Eastern Speed Shop. Uh, send us this uh, wax and grease remover from Spray Max. That uh, Happy said he sends those pictures to you on Instagram. Oh, uh, oh yeah, I think I got him. Yeah. Sorry, Swampy, I have no idea. I cannot remember. I'll go back and look. But one thing that's very important with this right here is you can see that I I got that soaked up but we need to make sure that we're getting up underneath all of these you see all these grooves right here all this this like spot welded uh it's where the i guess that's where the wires run for the tail lights but those are all just soaked if you don't get this off the primer will literally um just crack and and just lift off it's crazy it will not stick to this oil at all so i'll be he sent you the pictures of the scallop heads and the jugs too on instagram oh, okay i'll check those out maybe i missed them Okay, I don't think I got that pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it twice with brand new, another brand new rag. Now it's not cutting into it really good. very important that we clean these before we sand them 
because uh, we're going to age grit this even though it is bare metal. Um, however, if you don't clean them beforehand, all you're doing is when you sand it, especially with 80 grit, is you're just driving the um, contaminants into the metal. And then you got to get them out at that point. So a lot of this thing's pretty smooth, we're going to go ahead and make sure we get all of that grease off of here. I would do recommend taking care of rims in inner coat with flake. Um, if you're, if you're running it with Interco, you're spraying it, um, super wet and you're probably not waiting in between coats enough if you're running that, but, um, you have to let it dry. You're going to have to cut it down and then you're going to have to reflake, reflake it. And then when's the white base coat going to be available on big cartel? Uh, it actually is already. We don't have labels for it, but it is for sale there. You can see it actually, I think it's the first or second item on the top that uh, the quart of white base coat is available. Roman said, I didn't see it. Really? Oh, you saw it on there, right? We sold some. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you're looking at the Shopify website. So it's going to be lime, lime at bigcartel.com is where that white base is going to be. He said he'll check you. He knows how to order. He's ordered from there. It's just hiding from him, probably. No, no, it's just big white label says white base coat. Okay, once again, cleaning this thing twice because the first time just doesn't quite do it. In the interest of low budget builds, can you? get away without using epoxy primer, especially if you're having to fix dents and block sand multiple times? Yep, you can. You can. Um, the uh, urethane sandable primer is also direct to metal. And um, it's just another way to do it. You know, that's the, the way you're, you're going to do it, the way you plan on doing it is fine. There's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Did you show how to get the lid off disposable cups new to the system? Get, get the lid off of it? Yeah. The disposable? Yeah. Oh, the collar maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, the lid should come off. Yeah, I mean, sometimes if you spill around the edge, that collar will stick on there. And uh, He just says he's new to the system, so maybe he's just not sure how to do it. Yeah, it just should be, a, the collar should be should lock that that cup in. Uh, if you look on the Amazon website on that, or the Amazon uh, description on those PPS cups, it'll show you exactly how to use those. Roman said, found it. Got it, huh? Oh, is Roman in that set? Yeah. Oh, okay, I need that. All right. Nice and clean, looking good. All right, we're gonna we're, we're gonna move on to this guy. Not really looking forward to it too much, but somebody's got to do it. What is this? Looks like we got some uh, adhesive tape. You can uh, if you have some uh, 3M has some really good general purpose adhesive adhesive cleaner um, or a goo gone will also work. Chris uh, gave a $10 super chat. And I love your show. Uh, thanks for all the knowledge you have provided me over the years and thank you for the awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. that super chat. Yeah, thanks for the super chat. Yeah, hopefully this helps you guys because I get a lot of questions on, you know, what do I need? What materials do I need to, and how much do I need? Um, this will, and you can rewatch all these lives, so, and they're all going to be grouped together. We're going to try to take this from the very beginning, like we did the last episode, and uh, build this, this thing up. I'm not sure how we're going to paint it yet. I know it's going flake, but. Can you spray epoxy primer with the mini gun? Uh, yes, you can. Yep. Also, with this, uh, with the primers and the base coats, with when it comes to the mini gun, you can also reduce the paint out to make it a little bit thinner. Um, if the 
if it doesn't seem to be flowing out quite as well. So um, keep that in mind. If it's if it's uh, if you're if you're uh, spraying down a high build primer, it'd be better to go with the bigger gun because the, the material's thicker. Um, although you can still thin that down a little bit, uh, the, really the whole point of the high build primer is to build it up higher and taller. But a bigger tip gun would work better. Doesn't mean you can't use the other one. Uh, I always spray light coats of clear over candy to avoid running the candy, but it takes forever to bury the graphics. And I flow coat over a couple light coats of clear without running the candy. Uh, yes, you always, when, you, when you're clearing on top of candy, candy paint, um, you're always going to want to put a couple of tack coats on there. That way you can create that barrier. Uh, so that way those candies don't leach up into that clear coat. So yes, always light coats to start, uh, especially if you're off, if you're uh, painting in low temperature conditions. Uh, I've got some 80 grit here. Should leaf be put down on top of clear coat or is base okay? I, you can put it on base, but to be honest, you're going to get a better, um, more brilliant looking leafing, especially when you go to spin it, um, when it's applied on top of really smooth sanded clear coat. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of times I do, it all depends if you, if you have a lot of texture on the base coat, probably not a good idea. Maybe lay out some intercoat clear or clear it and sand it smooth. Um, my rule on my leafing is I always make sure it's cleared beforehand because I want it to turn out perfect. So um, I make sure I go the extra mile. If the tank has multiple layers, would it be worth using a good paint stripper instead of sanding it all? You know, um, paint stripper, the problem with that stuff is sometimes you get that in the nook and crannies and it's really hard to get out. Once you go to primer, that stuff can come back to haunt you. Um, I would actually would rather sandblast or have it sandblasted rather than putting any kind of a stripper on anything. S stay away from the strippers. Who's they ain't good. That well, doesn't mean it doesn't work. And, and there's there's more ways to catch a mouse, isn't there, Ashley? <laughs> as long as you don't have to take anything apart other than your spray gun, because you're fast at that, we can all make some progress. Yeah. Plain. We all have our strong suits. Okay, let me go ahead and clean this thing real quick. You didn't get the joke. I didn't. I didn't actually hear it all. Yeah, last time you sucked at taking apart the bike. I did. Oh, by the way, my buddy, uh, first thing in the morning, they came in and it was it was off for me. So shout out to my buddy Ryan for doing that. Probably took him a whole like three minutes. And we're going to clean this again. This is just a pre clean before the clean. Stay away from the shippers. It's definitely good life advice. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and give something away, and then I'll go ahead and get this thing ready to sand. Again, fix that table. She's a little shaky. He likes to live on the scary side of life. Let's give something away, Ashley. Yeah, what do you want to give away? Um, so I'll choose this one, and you can choose the next one. Very. Um, let's go ahead and. Let's see, what do we have that we can give away that people want? Um, well, you already got a winner, so hurry up. <laughs> we'll go with the quarter clear coat. We've never done one of those. So hopefully you need it. 
Um, if you don't need it, we can switch it out for a t-shirt. Just let us know. But yeah, we'll do a quart and a half clear coat, premium clear coat we have. Yeah, but if you don't use it, you don't want it, and you'd rather have a t-shirt, just tell us. You're winner. not going to hurt her feelings. Who's the winner? Who we got? Sean Daniels. I recognize that name. All right, let's go. So I got uh, orbital, an orbital sander here, six inch. Everything in the automotive industry is pretty much standard. It's gonna be a six inch uh, round uh, DA paper. Same thing with backing pad, six inch. Um, there's different types. There's ones that are uh, vacuum assisted, vacuum suction. This, nothing too fancy. This will do the job. I do have an interface pad that's on this. What this does is it helps kind of contour to the to the parts um, rather than being so rigid so that'll kind of follow the edges and uh but yeah so let's let's get going what do you use to clean your gun after you use the sizing glue uh i like to use glass cleaner you can also use alcohol rubbing alcohol quick I kind of want to go over what I found here let me scoot up to you guys and get a little closer okay um so we got to the point where we can kind of see what's going on and how they exactly how they built this thing up um so far so good the the paint's not like chipping off anywhere we have bare metal right here and we have a smooth transition that goes um into the paint uh, that's definitely something you want to look at because if it starts to chip or um, come off in chunks, you know that you're going to have to get rid of all of the all of the paint on this. Um, anything that you paint on, you're pretty much you're going to marry that that paint. You're going to your paint is going to do whatever that paint's going to happen to that. So, um, just so you know, this could be stripped, but from looking at it here, it looks like it does have a good primer. And once again, by rubbing my hand across that, I can, there's no hard chunks. That's where, so we have good adhesion all the way through. So whoever did this paint job, uh, seems like they did a pretty good job. It's probably just old, um, just problems with the edges maybe, uh, who knows, just wear and tear. Um, chips here and stuff like that. But all in all, it looks like we got a little body filler there little bit of bare metal poking out right there so you can tell it's not too thick uh, but you never know what's going on underneath these things because you can you can paint and and clear over like a massive amount of, of problems um, just by slapping a bunch of body filler on it and um, smoothing it out and rebolding it and painting it nobody would ever know so that's why it's good to go through and see exactly what's going on um, I do would I would like to pop 
through to bare metal in, in a few more of these spots so we can make sure that um, there's nothing crazy going on underneath this. But so far, so good. It's all holding up good. Uh, we're going to be able to paint directly on top of this once I get it sanded. But we're going to, once again, just do a little bit more investigating and uh, make sure we get this paint cut down. So um, that way we can add that primer. Good. All right, let's keep going. For instance, right here, there's just um, a big gash right here where you can see a little bit of rust starting to form. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting that all the way down to bare metal and then we're feathering out on both sides. Question came in. Uh, so Heavy D gave a $10 super chat and said, I don't have a place I can paint my bike. I live in an RV and was wondering if you think I could still do my paint job. I live in south of Houston, Texas on the Gulf coast should i wait for certain conditions uh i met somebody from uh houston today actually didn't meet him i talked to him but he rents out paint booths at his shop and he's in houston um god what was what was the name houston man there's somewhere a place in houston that you, that rents out a paint booth and you can uh that's an option um but really you can paint these outside just back your, back your mobile home up to a couple trees. Then, yeah, you awesome. can make it happen. Outside's a good place to paint. All right, there we go. There's the, well, that's actually still primer. Let me hit that a little farther, see if I can get it to bare metal. Let's see what's going on. the bare metal right there it looks like they did have a little bit more of a repair on that there's a little bit of body filler poking through um everything still feels good everything's staying intact uh the only real issues we have are just the paint chips on the edge and just like some chips and scratches that we've had uh, throughout the paint so whoever painted this before seemed like they did a pretty good job uh but once again like i said 
if you're going to uh, warranty this paint job for a customer, you need to understand that you are taking some chances when it comes to working on other people's uh, paintwork. If it's, if it's factory paint, different story. Keep the paint, keep the primer, scuff it down, sand it down, and, and paint it. In this case, it's already been messed with, so we really need to do some investigating. But so far, so good. Okay, as you can see right here, we had a lot of flaking up and uh, up around where the fuel spout is right here. Uh, so you got to make sure that you see all the areas that are blended. So I took that all to bare metal, and then you can see it's blended out into the paint. But very important, we do have a smooth, soft uh, blend there. So uh, once again, no real problems with that base coat. He said, I like that you pulled Dolphin Glaze uh, putty in their filler. What are you using for putty? Uh, I like Dolphin Glaze too, actually. I like the fact that it comes in a a tube, like in a like a blister pack. It comes in a blister pack, and it's yeah, it lays out good. Thank you. 
said, your young and restless Instagram post had me cracking up. My best <laughs> friend is a captain in the fire department, and those guys love to sit around and watch that show. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you watch that when you work for the fire department? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? You guys watch Young and uh, Days of Our Lives instead of Young and No, we'd watch Tosh.0 is what we'd watch. Oh. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> uh, but I didn't watch it when I was a kid. It wasn't Young and Restless. It was... Santa Barbara. It's only because my brother was watching it, and all I had to do was watch one episode, and then I had to know what happened in the next episode. So yeah, I watched that for a minute. What different effect would you get by spraying silver instead of black under your metal flake? Uh, less of a, less of a sparkle, um, but it all depends on what flake you're using. If you're using a really fat, large flake, you're going to want to probably spray that over a silver metal flake, or I mean a silver base coat. That way, because if you have big flakes, it makes it look like salt and pepper. But the lime line is a mix of two different flakes. So one of the flakes is small enough that it kind of fills up the area. Um, and in my opinion, it's I've sprayed it over everything and it, it just black base coats the way to go. In my opinion. I'm going to get these couple more areas right here, down below. And then uh, might as well hit a little bit down here. And then I'll hit that by, with hand. But by, by, with a, a sandy sponge or something like that. <laughs> Those yet. It should be in Daytona right now. Okay. Woo. That's it for that part right now. Let's get some glass cleaner and uh, go ahead and dump this off. Let's get some glass cleaner on this thing. Uh, so glass cleaner is just a waterborne cleaner. Uh, it's good for removing sanding residue, bugs, um, any other kind of waterborne contaminant. Ooh, there's a lot of grease in there still. But any glass cleaner will do. Just not like the you don't want to use like the lavender smell or something. You never know what that scent could do. this with wax and grease remover again.
floss cleaner matter if it has ammonia? Uh, no, it doesn't. I actually prefer to have a uh, pneumonia. <laughs> well, I pneumonia. You don't want pneumonia. <laughs> So the, the ammonia makes it uh, makes it pretty aggressive. So yeah, I mean either or, not necessary, but it's okay. Okay, we're gonna take a sanding sponge, and we're just gonna kind of lightly go over everything, kind of get the sanding scratches kind of uniform. This is equivalent to a 600 grit. So we are refining those 80 grit scratches a little bit. Windex is okay to use? What's that? Windex is okay? Yeah, Windex is okay, yep. Uh, it's better to use like an auto body supply brand, but I mean, Windex is fine. When you prep these, you need to make sure you get all of the gloss off. Everything needs to be sanded. Got to get into the corners. Got to get underneath. Paint needs something to stick to. Yes, look right away. Well, so if the tank has a sanding unit on the bottom, you may be able to get to that bit by taking the plate off. Uh, yeah. Which dent? There's not really any dents anymore. They're still covered. There's actually, this side looks like it's damaged a little more than this side because there's quite a bit of body filler. But I still did break through to, to metal there. Uh, once again, you never really know what's underneath this. Um, kind of gamble when you take a chance, you decide to paint over it. Uh, but the paint's sticking to my bike. Uh, if it was a customer's bike, I would probably send it off, send it off to get sandblasted. Let's go ahead and hit this with glass cleaner. Clean rack. Hey, I accidentally forgot to remove a piece of tape before I clear coated the skateboard I painted. Is there a fix for that? Um, yep, you just have to get it out and then re-clear it. Hopefully your clear is not too thick. But yeah, you can usually get it out with a, with a, a razor blade. You're going to have to pull it out. Uh, that happens quite a bit to me, actually. Okay, wax and grease remover one more time. It'll be safe and sorry, huh? What's the best way to remove Harley Davidson's factory graphics from a 2009 road glide? Um, if it's buried underneath the clear, then um, I would 80 grit them out just like I did here. 
and then um, refine those 80 grit scratches once you got the the sticker out refine them with like a, a 400 grit or something and then you can go ahead and put a, a, a sandable primer over top of that once it's dry then just block it down that'll take care of the sand scratches Okay, we're looking good. I'm going to go ahead and take this sucker off. What's the best way to find paint code on Harley so I can color match aftermarket parts? Mm. Uh, hopefully it's not a brand new Harley. You can go down to your local jobber store and if it's still painted by PPG, they should have the paint code. But be warned, it's going to be expensive. If you can even get them, but there's ways you can uh, you can match those. Usually, a lot of them are like the sun glow, which is basically just a candy paint. Let me hit that a little bit more right here. And that. On the laptop. Joe says, my buddy, Utah local, got a shovel head featured in Easy Rider magazine last month. Paint job was done by you about five years ago or so. Paint looks awesome. Really? Wow. I think five it years was ago. Shane. Oh, I yeah. I saw that. Yeah, it was Shane. Was it Shane, Joe? I'm pretty sure it was Shane. I'm pretty sure I saw that on his uh, post. Okay, with these styles of uh, bungs, let me show you. These are not the uh, desirable style of fuel bungs to have because they do, they are prone to leak. Um, most newer Harley Davidsons are going to have like an inner lip inside of here that you can tape to. Um, this does not. This just has like, it's just welded around the edge. There's not really a spot where you can stop the paint. That's where problems with paint peel and stuff happen. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to tape up the inside, allowing the uh, the tape to stick up and then I'll kind of fold it over. You'll see that in a minute, but that's not going to take care of the fact that these are still, uh, these bungs are still uh, designed very poorly, but uh, like everything, we're going to deal with it. We can't change the fact that it's not the way we want it. He said it's like a maroon burgundy red. I'm only painting a tour pack, so a pint would do. Just finding it in a pint is my problem mm. for the Harley match. Yeah, that's why I want to sell it to you in a quart, which is probably going to be like, I don't know, four or five hundred bucks, maybe or more. See how I did that? Just take the tape and you're going to stick it to the inside. If you wanted to touch up one side of a tank, would you have to rub the whole tank back and re-clear the whole tank? Or can you tape off and clear the area you fixed? It depends if you have a spot where you can break the paint off. If there was a dash right here um, where you had a seam and you were comfortable with having a line there, yes, you could do that. Uh, me, I wouldn't even spend the time to do that. I would, if you have a blemish on one side and say you need to re-clear it, you would just scuff the whole thing down, you know, 600 grit, get it nice and clean, and then fix that problem and re-clear coat the whole tank. 
It's up to you, though. But yeah, you could. If there was a spot to be able to stop the paint and, and not see it. You gonna plug this in? Yeah. I gotta go grab the extension cord. Let me finish. Uh, there we go. We kind of just fold those over. That allows the the primer to kind of flow over the edge right there. Maybe this will be long enough. That sound. Oh, I dropped the. Got a charger right there. Oh, here you go. Yep, thanks. All right. We're about ready to go. Well, we're about ready to mix up some epoxy primer. We got that taped up. We do need to tape up the bottom of this petcock too. You could uh, pull this off. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on and then just tape it up because there's a little bit of fuel left in there. Okay. Is that the only spot? Uh, I probably don't want to paint this hose either. I'd rather have that thing stay black. So I'm just going to wrap some tape around that. Um, or you could just pull it off. It's not going to hurt anything leaving it on either. So I want to make sure we tape it up so we don't get paint and primer all over it because we need to reuse that. Okay. Nice. I'm going to go hang this up in the booth and then uh, we're going to mix up some of that epoxy primer we were talking about and we'll go ahead and spray it. And while that's drying in between coats, we'll give some stuff away and we have two more parts we're going to go ahead and prep because those ones do not need epoxy primer. We'll go ahead and get these started. Can your epoxy primer be sprayed as a sealer over bare metal? Yep, it can. Yeah, you you could uh, you can actually reduce it up to 10% and it'll make that flow out a little nicer.
Okay. The moment y'all been waiting for. You see this okay? So, uh, this is the uh, Lime Lime paint system here. Plastic cups goes in there. You do have a, a lid that has a built-in strainer. That's great. If you're flaking something, remember to cut that out. And then you have the retainer ring. Most of y'all know how this, this works. Makes it a lot easier than having to clean your cup every time and waste all of the uh, materials and the thinners in order to do that. So uh, using these, you can also, like we talked about earlier, you can clean them and reuse them a couple of times. So uh, not all epoxy primers, but this epoxy primer does require that it's mixed one-to-one. Uh, -one. So you're gonna mix up. Am I good? I you froze. Tell. I'm frozen. Back. Aha! Oh, I'm still a little glitchy. We're going to make sure this is mixed up good. Hopefully, I'm, oh, am I good? Looks like it. All right, once again, if you didn't hear me, one-to-one uh, -one on this mixture, part A, we're going to do uh let's see how many ounces do we need in order to cover that good i feel like we can do it in eight ounces just those two parts we do need to spray the underneath of the rear fender so that's going to be a little bit more material but uh i feel like if we went maybe maybe we should go 12 ounces nah i think eight ounces will do it And then we'll let's see if that is. Here we go. Four ounces right on the right on the dot. And go up to the eight ounces on this. Use our stir stick and mix this up. just a light gray and you can see the consistency here it's pretty thin it's not as thick as what a sandable primer obviously would be you apply the, the lid and then the retainer ring We're going to be using the uh, 1.4 HVLP spray gun. Is it clean? Yeah, it looks like it's clean. I'm going to lock that on. And we're all good to go. I'm going to get my respirator. I'm going to go load up the other fender into the booth because I do need to hang that up because we do need to um, paint the underneath of that. So a lot of times I'll put it up on stands and let it sit on a couple of stands. I'd rather paint it that way, but since we do need to primer underneath, we need to have it hanging up. What's the work time once it's mixed? Um, well, that's a good question. You have about, it 
depends on temperature, but you have about 35 minutes. But um, that's if I remember correctly. Let me see if it says it right here. Uh, you have about 30 minutes. If you're spraying in like 100 degree heat, obviously that's going to be cut in half. You have 15 minutes. So epoxy primer doesn't need to be sanded. Epoxy primer does need to be um, does need to be sanded. Yeah. What is the temp of the spray booth tonight? Uh, it's about sixty five degrees in here. You think, right? I don't know. The, the heater set at sixty five and it's on right now, so it's a little bit less mm -hmm. than that. You do need to make sure. Um, and so a couple of things with this um, this anything that you spray you need to be wearing a, a NIOSH approved respirator. You should also be wearing uh, gloves, everything really to protect your skin as well. If you're, if you're not wearing long sleeves like me, then uh, wear a paint suit. Also uh, goggles, glasses, um, gonna need those as well. Uh, the good thing about this epoxy primer, it is isocyanate free. The, uh, so not to say it's not bad to, in, to breathe in, but it's it's not um, it's not as crazy as some of those other ones. So you know, it's the isocyanates that you really need to pay attention to and stay away from. Make sure you stay protected. Do you ever use two point five spray gun for heavy primer? Nope. I think the the biggest gun I've ever used was a one eight. What's the advantage of epoxy primer over sandable primer for this job? Uh, epoxy primer is going to offer uh, another level. A better level of corrosion protection. It's also going to offer a better color holdout, um, sand scratch, less chances of sand scratches showing up later. Um, uh, did I already say better adhesion? Better corrosion properties. It's going to it's um, going to sacrifice itself uh, before your metal actually um, starts to corrode. So the the primer will break down the um, it's a very, very special product. I like it, um, but once again, it, it's the, the purpose of it is to for direct to metal to um, stick like crazy and to offer um, a, uh, a really good corrosion protection. Urethane primers, they're a little more porous. They're, um, they don't, they, they stick to bare metal, at least some of them do, as long as they are, they do mention that they're direct to metal, um, but you just don't have uh, it's just not quite as durable, but uh, not to say it won't get the job done. Uh, many times I've just gone straight uh, high build primer right over metal. Do you have the TDS up on the website? Uh, I do. I have the email. I can email anybody the, uh, the MSDs for those. Applying Bondo over epoxy, what's the best grit for Bondo to adhere to without sanding through? Uh, I like to do 80 grit or 180 grit. Um, so sometimes those, like I said, sanding scratches can come back to haunt you too. So I, you know, sometimes I would like to refine 80 grit with 180 grit. All right, I got those hung up. Uh, let me go plug my gun in. I'll come back and grab you guys. Uh, we'll take a trip into the booth. We're going to apply our first coat. We'll come back here. We'll talk a little bit about uh, painting the plastic front fairing and how we're going to do that. We're going to get that prepped. And we'll also go ahead and pull that emblem off for uh, who said they wanted it? Somebody did. We'll pull it off for what's his name? Travis. Travis. And um, get that prepped as well. Those parts aren't going to need epoxy. We're going to go straight to the uh, sandable primer. So 
Let me get this set up. I'll be right back. Sorry. Are the clears we sell isocyanate? Yes, the, the um, pretty much any clear coat, uh, two part clear coat is going to be isocyanate. Yes. Um, as far as I know, I don't know if there's any isocyanate free clear coats, but uh, boxy, there is. So. All right, don't mind my paint booth. It's pretty messy. We're gonna kind of double check everything. Feels clean. Okay. When it comes to primers, you don't necessarily have to spray it at a really high pressure. Uh, to be honest, I would rather spray at a lower pressure, have less overspray and less waste. Uh, but it's up to you. Um, I prefer a lower pressure. I'm like a 22 PSI, um, but uh, a lot of people would prefer to be spraying around 35 to 40. Uh, but it's all up to you. We're going to be primering this uh, with a with a sandable primer afterwards, so it doesn't really matter if we do uh, gather up a little bit of texture. All right, let's go. Now you can see that laid down and it has some orange peel to it. If you were to spray this down as a sealer and you wanted to put base coat right over the top, you're best off spraying at a higher PSI and also maybe putting just 10% of urethane reducer to thin out the mixture to let it spray out and um, lay out smoother. However, this will start to flow out and, and, and be smooth because uh, it is just the first coat. But once again, if, if you have a lot of texture on this and you go to spray base coat on it, the base coat is going to take on the texture of the epoxy. So if you're doing a what they call a wet on wet, if we were to spray this as a sealer, we would wait 30 to 45 minutes and then we would go straight to the base coats without sanding. Basically, that's a chemical adhesion. Um, the way we're going to do it is we're spraying this and we're going to let it dry and then we're going to scuff it up so our primer can stick to it mechanically um, that way. So like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's no wrong way or right way. Sometimes there's a faster way and a slower way. Uh, personally, I would rather just let them dry and then scuff them up and then go from there. But if you're at a collision shop, a lot of times that's what they'll do is they'll do a wet on wet sealer.
Okay. First coat's done. Put on a, a light coat. No reason to like bury it and get it all covered right at once. Um, with better new light coats, it dries faster, and um, you lose, you you can use less material to get the job done. I bought. Zero nine two one filters. It says organic vapor P one hundred. Is that good for the isocyanate? What do you use? Uh, yeah. As long as it's NIOSH approved, um, that's really what you're looking for. I should say it right here. Right way. There we go. NIOSH. That's what you need to look for. I'm not sure on the other stuff. Uh, 3M is probably good, but make sure that it protects you from um, isocyanates and stuff like that. So you're saying you're looking for a textured finish than going to sand it smooth? Uh, you'll see. You'll see that uh, you're not really looking to get a textured finish. I, I, I did spray that at a lower psi. Um, that way we didn't have all the waste of materials and stuff like that. Um, it's all up to you, but it will be smooth once it's, uh, but there will be a little bit of orange peel. We're not really looking because these parts, once again, they're going to get sanded, sanded, scuffed, not sanded smooth. They're going to get scuffed so the sandable primer can stick to that. That will build up over that, and then we're going to cut that down smooth because the sandable primer, it sand, it's meant to build, and it's meant to sand, kind of like almost like a body peel. Sprayable body blow. All right, let's go ahead and take. I'm going to take this adhesion uh, cleaner. That's it, adhesion cleaner. Adhesive yeah. cleaner. Adhesive remover. We're just going to let it soak up underneath that. I'm trying to save this for you, so. Want you bending it. Okay, I'm just gonna take a, it's a brand new razor blade. And I'm just gonna run it down. Oh, it's gonna come off really easy. What's the difference between acrylic clear and uh, Usually it would be acrylic urethane clear. Um, so yes, acrylic urethane is what most uh, clear coats are. That's what that was. Uh, there's also uh, acrylic base coat, urethane. If you had a single stage base coat, it would be a, uh, a urethane, but uh, base coats are just acrylic. Um, clear coats are acrylic urethane. If I'm wrong on that, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I cut that straight. Okay, so a little bit more adhesion promoter. <laughs> Adhesive remover. Hello, maybe we got you back. 
I don't know. Okay, okay, here we go. Do we save it? Ah, uh, back. Uh oh, it's loud now. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. We lost our connection again. Sorry about that, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. The troopers. Let's get this uh, cleaned up really quick. Wax and grease remover. See my head, huh? Huh. It's plastic. Thing we, saved up. Them. we saved them. We saved it. Washer we are headed, uh, we're kind of like in. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I know y'all want to see my face and the part. Let's see. Okay. I'll just squat. <laughs> oh, my bike's leaking oil. Well. Yeah. Go ahead and clean the underneath of this thing. Oh, this is going to take some... Wow, look at this. Look at all that. LEDs. That's some fancy LEDs. It looks like I'll take care of that later. I'm going to have to... Uh, <laughs> Scott said that must be primer at Adam's beard. <laughs> I think it's sandy residue. No, it's just your your beard's going gray. Oh, oh, I see how you guys are. <laughs> I see how you guys are. Okay, let me grab the the uh, sander and we will. Same thing with this. We're gonna. They're all joking about mics, and I'm gonna leave too. <laughs> Stop. Well, I caught that mouse. I caught that mouse. I told you that, right? Yeah, you did. About to run out of here again. It's not very it's earned wisdom, your, your silver box there. There you go. I can't remember if you said that's a new shirt design or an old one. Oh, uh, this is an old one. I actually made that myself on this, on the day. On the cricket, cricket cutter. On the cricket. It's Gen 1, yeah. Limeline. I made it with my own and that machine. See how fast that was? That was just half the fender. So we want to make sure we get these pinstripes out, even though they are smooth. And uh, actually, these are painted on. Um, usually, they'll be a pinstripe. I got a taped pinstripe, um, but they're painted on. So you know, we could get away with not even sanding those out. But there is a little bit of ridge there, um, so we're, we are going to go ahead and sand it out. You can see. All we're doing is just cutting this down, uh, making sure we're getting rid of all the gloss. You can see on the edges here, we still want to hit that. Definitely all this inside and out. But uh, sand that smooth.
Okay. Get the address. Breaking up again. Yeah. All right, let's take him into the booth. Back in the booth, let's put another coat on this, guys. Are you guys there? Oh, there he is. Figured it out. <laughs> I have no idea why. It's so glitchy. I know they are. We're out. We're super way, way. We live way out west. Almost to the mountains, and I know they're putting in, um, they're doing all new internet and stuff in the, around us, so we're hoping that'll help. Did they get any of it at first? It was really glitchy at first. Huh. And then it went black. And I got us back on and then I biked up. I don't know what the hell. Oh, jeez. Grab our sanding sponge once again. Wi-Fi booster? No, I don't. Mr. C said a Wi-Fi booster might help. Uh, well, I have these. Is that what they're What's that? That's kind of the same thing. A Wi-Fi booster. Yeah. Oh, it is. The, uh, the 600 grit sanding sponge just really helps out as far as getting into the little hard to reach areas and the edges.
Well, there we go. Looks like we're pretty good. We're going to get this cleaned up. Um, and this will go into the um, uh, sandable primer with the other parts. Um, so we're good to go here. I'll clean it one more time before it goes into the booth. But it's going to sit here for a little bit, so I'll just go ahead and leave it. Last but not least, we do have a plastic fairing. Now, I don't know if this has been coated with a paint. It's hard to tell. It looks like it may have been coated with something. Um, anyways, anything I paint that's plastic, I always apply adhesion promoter. But you do need to, anything you paint, you do need to scuff it down. So um, that's what we'll do. We'll use the 600 grit sanding sponges. We won't use the 80 grit because there's no reason to pull off any of the paint or any of the plastic. Um, we're going to, 600 grit is going to work for what we're doing here. John said he's rural and he went with Starlink and he said the best decision he's made. Oh, really? He said you might need to plug it in, unplug it for 30 seconds and plug it back in. The booster. The booster. I don't think it's not Oh, mine's actually working still. That's funny. Yours isn't working. I'm going to start with wax and grease remover. Like I said, before we sand anything, we want to make sure that it's clean from any contaminants. It's on the right one. She'll be back online here in a minute. Let's, uh, and we do, we do have, have these new uh, sanding scuff pads. Um, they're for the DA sander. Those will be coming out um, here within the next month or so. I have these on order. Um, Aha! I don't know why that keeps happening. Let's show this real quick. Um, I don't, you guys heard me? Am I still glitchy? I, I, I don't know. Mine's not working. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Where did 
that go? So I have a, uh, these, like I talked about before, I do have these pads coming. It's going to be like a, a month, a month and a half. But these are basically a Scotch-Brite pad that's meant for your DA sander. So it's going to make the job a lot quicker and uh, hopefully a lot easier. So we'll try it out. grit sanding sponge on all the hard to get areas like you want to make sure like a, a prone area for paint to lift and to peel is like right here like in these valleys if you just leave those gloss and you don't scuff those down and you paint over that what's going to happen is um, the fact that there's kind of a valley there um, and there's not enough adhesion there because it's still slick and smooth. There's nothing for that paint to stick to. So what's gonna happen is it's just gonna lift up right on that edge, especially if there's any kind of pressure that's pushing up against that, like the windshield that bolts to this. Um, any kind of pressure is gonna push to that, it's going to cause that um, to lift. So common problem, uh, you see it all the time. People don't take care of their edges, they don't scuff them up. And then that's like the first place where uh, paint shrinks and it wants to lift. Glass cleaner. Freeze up. 
up. Yeah, I think yours is just as glitchy. I don't know. All right. That's uh. Looks like I need to hit it a little bit more up into here. You can see like right there we're all talking about. If you leave these spots glossy, there's a good chance that the paint's going to shrink and not going to stick to that area. So make sure you're getting into there and to all these in here. These edges here. Those are all spots that are prone to being missed. You see in here, I got pretty good, but um, yeah, you need to make sure you get them all the way sanded down. So all the gloss is gone. So let's give something away. Cause that's about it for us. Hopefully. Well, said, cool if you could find an FXR fairing for it. And then Josh said, by chance, we have the scotch bright pads in gray also, or just red? Um, I, I, they are just going to be in red. What kind of heating element do you use in your booth? Uh, I don't use anything for heat. Just everything's air dry. When's the bright green lime-lime glass cleaner coming out? Uh, how do we know we have that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not coming out. That's just basically I just make my glass cleaner with a uh, with a coffee tree. Put it in the spray bottle. What grit is a red scotch bright pad roughly? Six hundred grit. All right. Well, let's see if we can spin the wheel. Let's spin it. What are we giving away? I don't know. You choose. Uh, we'll do a leafing pack, huh? So we'll do the silver, the gold, and the bronze leaf. And um, let's also give them the glue. That way they can get that. There. Michelle Pilot, you are a winner of the, uh, like I said, you're going to win the leafing kit. Um, it'll have the um, all of the colors of leaf, the silver, the gold, and the, uh, the copper. And I'll actually be using the copper here tomorrow, if not Saturday. Um, and then also, also the sizing glue. So if you don't want that, you can always just let us know, info at... Um, info at limelinepaintsupply.com and we can trade that out for a t-shirt if you'd rather have that but uh all right well sorry about all the glitches tonight folks uh, hopefully we can get that fixed by next week i don't know what's going on maybe we'll have starling next week but uh, appreciate y'all being here and the support um thanks for supporting the limeline um, if you're uh, if you're having good luck and you're doing well and things are going good um show people what you can do you know like uh if you, if you learned how to tape something up learn how to spray out candy maybe it's your first thing you've done um show people you know show people what what you were able to learn and, and it's not hard so but once again i'm not going to keep talking um we'll see you guys next week we'll be going hard of the fxr product project again until we're all finished and uh yeah hopefully this helps thanks for being here bye guys Next week.